It is rare that somebody comes along and leaves such an indelible mark on Irish society and Irish culture and Irish politics, Irish life in general. I think it's worth on a day like today to remind ourselves why Vicky Phelan is famous. She is famous for all the wrong reasons. She never wanted this level of fame or notoriety. Her story, her journey to notoriety started all the way back in 2011, 11 years ago, when she went for a smear test and the reading of that smear test came back as completely normal. Within three years, by July 2014, Vicky Phelan, on foot of another smear test, was diagnosed with cervical cancer. And the early days, the results were good. By the following February, February 2015, she had the all clear and everything was looking fine. But over two years later, two and a half years later, September 2017, that's when things began to unravel to a degree. It was then she found out that on foot of an audit carried out by cervical check, that that reading, that normal reading given to her in 2011 was incorrect. And within two months, by November of 2017, she had been diagnosed again with cancer. The cancer was back and back with a vengeance. She was told at the time that without treatment, she would be gone within six months. With aggressive treatment, she might last a year. Now, that was November 2017. She obviously lasted an awful lot longer at the time. She's spoken since. She said she made a decision to do everything she could to live as long as she could. And it was during the aggressive treatment for cervical cancer post-2017 that she began to learn more about her case. And as a consequence, we began to learn more about her case and about cervical check as well. Because early in 2018, she saw her medical file. And that's when she realised that not only had there been an issue with the reading of the smear in 2011, but that after her diagnosis in 2014, after an audit was carried out, that some of her own doctors knew that there had been an issue and they choose not to tell her. She ultimately sued the HSE, she sued the state, she sued the lab as well in the states and without an admission of liability they settled for two and a half million euro. And the only reason we know any of this is because she refused to sign a non-disclosure agreement. And we shouldn't forget that. That if uh, the HSE and the state and this lab had their way, we wouldn't know Vicky Phelan's name. We wouldn't know the name of Ruth Morrissey. We wouldn't know the name of Emma McMahona. We wouldn't know the name of Irene Teep. We wouldn't know any of these people's names if they had their way. They would want it hushed up and just settlements paid on the QT. But because Vicky Phelan said, no, stuff your non-disclosure agreement, we know her name and we know all those other names. And it would be a long time, I would imagine, before anybody forgets those names, such as the mark, as I say, they've left on Irish society and Irish life. And I think it is fitting that we remember them and other people out there and people listening to the show, I'm sure, will remember them in their own ways uh, over the coming hours and coming days.